Welcome to the R video tutorial on testing for constant or homogeneous variants. Often we need to test for common variants or constant variants, homogeneous variants, whatever you want to call it, on many types of tests. So, for example, ANOVA, and if you're using some variants of the t-test that doesn't use the Satterthwaite approximation for the degrees of freedom, you may need to test for this. So a lot of people want to know how to do this. So here we go. So I'm going to use the same data that I used for the t-test video just to keep things consistent. So if you've watched the video on inferences and means in R, this is the same data set. So uh, you can run back to the repository, which is linked below, and grab it. So I'm just going to run this real quick, read in the data. Uh, the data is right here. You can see here are the columns again. You shouldn't be quite familiar if you've been following along with what we've been doing so far. All right, so now we need to test for two variances. So they're gonna do a test for two variances versus a whole bunch of them. All right, so our two variances that we're gonna use, are interested in will be CPK1 and CPK2. So I'm gonna do var.test. I just simply put in the columns that I'm interested in, cycler1, dollar sign, CPK1, comma, cycler1, and it should start popping up here. CPK2. Now what this will do is this will do an F test for the ratio of variances and it looks to see if the ratio is equal to one. So if I run this here, I will get an output, which I have to scroll up a little bit. So if you look here, this did a F test to compare two variances. The data is CPK1, CPK2. The F value is 1.0302. Now, for those of you who don't know, the F value is always a mean around one, or exactly one. And it's defined by these degrees of freedom on the numerator and the denominator. And it gives us a P value here of 0 0.9264. So nobody would think that these variances are different. All right, now, what if we have more than two? So we're in the ANOVA situation. Well, there's a different test we can use. So let's give ourselves some space here. Hopefully you've got everything typed up. So we're gonna look at a test on many variances. Test on several. Okay, and this is called Bartlett's test. And you can see it will pop up here in RStudio in the default. So Bartlett.test. Okay, here you put simply put in the columns that you're interested in, or you can put in uh, other items that will help you discern the groupings. So first we'll do it one way, and then we'll look at it another way. So here, Bartlett.test, we're gonna put in our cycler data, and we're going to just grab certain columns. Now let's go see which columns we want. Open this up. We're interested in cycler CPK1, CPK2, CPK3, and CPK4. So these are the ones that we're actually interested in. So we're going to put in, so this is columns 5, 6, 7, and 8. So we'll go back over here. So this will be columns 5 through 8. And I can run this e easily. So if I did this, uh, you can see it says Bartlett's test of homogeneity of variances. Here's the data. Here's Bartlett's k squared. Here's the value. Degrees of freedom are three. There are four groups. The p-value is 0.9989. Nobody would say that these variances are different. All right. So what if we wanted to look at it from a different perspective? So if we look back at our data here, we had treatment groups, none, low, medium, and high. So what I might want to do is look at, say, CPK1, and I want to look and see if it varies across these treatments. So why don't we give that a go? So we're going to have let's see test on several variances across groupings. Okay, so it's again, it's a Bartlett test because we have more than two. Var, var test is only if you have two. So let's see here, cycler one dollar sign. I'm gonna use just CPK one. And I can put in a factor over here, which would be cycler one dollar sign. And if you remember, it was the treatment. And let's see if this, it can figure out what to do with this. 
Okay, so now it comes up with a different test than what we had before. It's just looking at Cycler 1, CPK1, but it notices it has different groupings. Okay, it has different groupings here. And it's testing across the none, low, medium, and high groupings to see if the variances differ across those for only Cycler 1, CPK. And the p-value again is 0 0.9935. No way that anybody would say that these are significant. And just as a hint, most people do not want these tests to be significant, okay? Because this isn't a fundamental assumption. We're assuming the variances are constant. If you show the variances are not constant, then that often means you need to use a different test. So we were gonna do an ANOVA on this. Well, we'd go, well, this maybe isn't appropriate for ANOVA, so we would have to do something else. And nobody wants to do that. Now, if you have to do it, go ahead and do it. But don't be eager to find something significant off of these tests because it usually means that you're gonna to have to do something more complicated. All right, so we made it through the test for homogeneity on variances. Hopefully this will get you going and you can keep going. If you have any questions, please ask or move on to the next video.